Right hello you lot, I'm going to continue my little theme I've got going on at the moment where a while back I made a video where I was saying about Chinese stuff, you know, cheap stuff, Chinese stuff, is it really worth it? And I've always, you know, I've come to the conclusion that the answer is no, it's always best to buy a proper brand. Um, I did an unboxing a while, a couple of days ago of a soldering iron. Chinese soldering iron of which I will do the review of soon, but I'll give you a spoiler. Don't bloody buy it for goodness sake. It's horrendous Anyway, the next one that I am Gonna try and prove my point with This is an antenna analyzer a Sark 100 S A R K 100 They're sold from a company in China so I'm assuming the whole lot is Chinese. I haven't looked inside the box yet. This is how it comes when you order it. Come quite quick, so I think it might come from a, a, a an English, like a UK, like place. But um, the actual seller that I found this on, I found it cheapest on eBay, fifty pounds. And if you sort of um, have a look at some proper analyzers, like MFJ ones, I mean, I had an MFJ one, but I sold it because I didn't, I didn't use it enough. They're about £300, £250, £300 for a good one. This is 50 quid, And they market it as being very good. <laughs> but we'll find out. I haven't opened the box. Let's find out what we get inside the box. Well, I suppose that's a good sign so far that it seems to be quite well packaged. Oh, look, we've got some instructions, it looks like. Nothing else inside that box, so we'll get rid of that. Hello, sorry, sorry, knocking you lot about. I'm very limited for space on this bench at the moment, so you'll have to excuse my closeness. What we got here? Oh dear, they ain't looking good already. Look at that. How are you meant to read that? Unless you speak Chinese. Or whatever language that happens to be. Install the CH30G drive. Oh dear, don't tell me you've got to plug it into the computer. You shouldn't have to plug an antenna analyzer into a computer for goodness sake. It's for analyzing antennas, antennas not computers. <sighs> this turns out to be no good. I think I'll be um, I'll be sending it back. Well, I, 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 I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. No, I'm being optimistic. How the hell did you get in here? Hold on. At least it seems to be quite well packaged anyway. Um, here we go. There's our analyzer. I'll tell you what, it's actually made out of metal. So there's a point there. It seems to be reasonably well constructed on the outside anyway. Made of a nice metal case. Yeah, we got uh, oh DC 12 to 14 volts there. Uh, USB on and off switch val I'm assuming that means value mode and can oh sorry can is up mode is here band config and scan SWR analyzer well you know so far we're giving it a good point because the construction is good this must be where you put the battery I'm assuming you put batteries in it. Uh, you can, I can, I think I'm going to test it in a moment. Um, I think I'm going to power it with a 12 volt source on there though. All right, well, that's what you get. Not that you can see it, but that's what you get. So at the moment, construction-wise, the switches feel okay for the price, 50 pounds. You know, it's a metal case. Alright, well, give me a minute. I'm going to find a power source for it. And then we'll switch it on. And then I'm going to plug it into a dummy load. And the way that I like to test SWR meters, matches, and analyzers, put a dummy load in first. That should read a 1 to 1 SWR. If it doesn't read a 1 to 1 SWR with a dummy load, we know there's something wrong because a dummy load, a good working dummy load, should be flat. You know, it should be perfect. 
residency and everything. So, anyway, give me a minute. Hello, you lot. Right, let's try and move you back a little bit. Might be a little bit difficult, but there we go. So we've got a 12 volt source coming into it. Let's plug this dummy load into it. And it should read flat. You know, it should be a perfect residency, perfect SWR. I'm going to have to do this on the side. Oh, hold, on. hold on a minute. It might be better. So this switch you want to see what happens. SWR1 46 ohms frequency is 27 on the dot uh, okay so you press them up and down and that's how you get your frequencies takes a while there you go there we now again quicker lovely I'm gonna go to channel 19 all right Twenty-seven, seven, eight. I don't know how you move it across. I don't know, but seven, eight is good enough. So we've got an SWR of one, forty-seven ohms. So that's reading right. So now I'm going to plug it into my antenna, and we'll see what my antenna reads. According to my SWR meter, my antenna on channel 19 which is 27 but we're doing it in 780 is about 1.4 but um, with, with 4 watts it's about 1.2 something like that so let's plug the antenna in and find out right I really have got to do it on the side for this because there's the antenna cable I've got to do it like that I'm afraid because it's not very long um, does it does it stay to the frequency that's going to be something that's big for me if that goes back Ah, so it goes to 20 meters every time. I'm not really pleased about that. But never mind. Oh, what's that doing? Oh, it's scanning. Oh, I'm done with scanning. Go away. Band. No, it stops. It stops scanning. God, talk about bloody awkward. No, I don't care. Press matching key. Right. Band. 17, no, 15, no, 12, no, 11, 27, so I've got to go right back up again now, oh I can go down there, of course I can, oh 26, I don't only got 26, I only got 27, oh it's going down again, what's going on here, bloody hell, We'll get there eventually. Twenty-seven, seven, eight. One point three eight. Yeah. Twenty-six ohms. I don't know why it's reading twenty-six ohms. It should be fifty, but an SWR of one point three eight. That's about right. Because it's about 1.3, 1.4, yeah, so that's about right. It's about reading roughly the same as my meter, I would, I would say. So, to be honest, the readings so far seem to be... I'm not quite sure what that's all about. But, yeah, yeah well, there must be a reason for that. Alright, so, we know that it does seem to be working. You know, it actually does read a reasonable 1.4, so it's gone up now. Why's it gone up? Maybe it's settled down. At one point, yeah, it moves about. But for fifty quid, what do you expect? All right, so let's go through, you know, some of the other settings. Let's try and work out some of the other settings and see what we can find out. 
Right, so I've had a look at these, and I, to tell you the truth, I honestly don't know why you would need to install any drivers. I, just, I mean, if you can do anything with this on a computer, perhaps it's to update it, I don't really know. It doesn't really give an explanation, it just tells you how to install a driver, but why you'd need to plug this into a computer, I honestly have no clue. Unless it's something to do with... Um, like a computer radio perhaps or whatever they call that I don't know but for the purposes of what I need it for or would want to use it for would be well <laughs> to tune up antennas as simple as that you know it seems to do all the HF so it would be handy for tuning up 40 meter wires 20 meter wires um, you know 11 meter mobile antennas on the car and things like that so this is what I would predominantly use it for so I'm going to plug this dummy load in so that we can actually get a reading of anything. Oh, sorry, plug for that. Um, there we go. So, that goes to 14. I don't know why it bloody goes to 14. That, that is one very annoying thing. Why can't it stay on the frequency you last had it on? Um, so we've got mode, what does mode do? Oh, capacitance, alright, okay, off, off, and SW1, oh, okay, so that goes through those, band, not band, what does config do? PC link, step size, ah, okay, suspend timeout, calibrate, Software load, uh, maybe you need to plug it into the computer to load up your software onto it. I really don't know. PC link again. Okay. So, how do you get out of there then? Just press the scan button. Oh, you see, how do you get out of it then? Mode? No. Nope. Waiting. No, I don't want to wait. Link. Oh, there we go. Scan. So, I'm assuming that's scanning now. I can only assume that it's going to keep scanning until it finds... Oh, well, that says 1. Anyway, I can only assume it's going to keep scanning until it finds a frequency... BW, press any key. Well, apparently this dummy load is resonant with an SWR of 1 on 16 megahertz, or nearly 17 megahertz I suppose it might be I don't really know um, scan again, scan again Joey. oh it's going to start with 13 again oh bloody hell so I bet that oh what? what the hell's going on here alright Okay. Well, to tell you the truth, it's very basic, isn't it? There's not a lot here. There's not a lot really to to go through. One thing I do want to do. Hold on a minute. I've got radio in the background making a noise. Can turn that down. One thing I do want to do is I just want to see what the battery compartment is like. I'm hoping that they give you... Oh, for God's sake. I'm hoping that they give you a... Um, you know, a little tray thing in order to stick your batteries in. Because I've heard that some of these Chinese things, they don't give you nothing. All they give you is a little wire poking out that you have to put your own tray on. But I suppose for 50 quid, what do you expect? Ah, yes, just as I suspected. Well, that's a bit of a nuisance, isn't it? So that means if you want to use this on battery power, you're going to have to get yourself either some kind of rechargeable battery, which is 12 volts, 
um, with a you put a plug on the end and you can put a battery in there perhaps a light pub or something like that and uh, you know put a plug on here like a Dean's plug maybe or something like that and you can just plug it in and away you go or get yourself a battery tray and put some AA's in it but it must be 12 volts because of well 12 to 14 it could be up to 14 volts minimum of 12 to work properly maximum of 14 otherwise you'll blow it up and uh, yeah, we're not having any focus at the moment so oh, bloody hell, come on Car, what's it all about, eh? There we go. 12 volts minimum, 14 volts maximum. So, yeah. Um, in fact, what I might do is get, because um, I do the old RC cars and all that, I might get some, find one of my old batteries, uh, a 3 cell or something like that, 11 point, oh, no, 11 point four, uh, well, it might be enough, be, be nearly enough. Probably a bit enough to power it. And stick that in there, that'll fit in there lovely as well. Oh well, that's a bit of fun experimenting for the future. But, that's as far as this is going to go. Uh, what I am going to be doing, is I'm going to be putting this to the test. I'm going to take it out. I've got um, an area where I want to put on the car and all that when I go out mobile. So, I'm going to use this and I'm also going to take my trusted SWR meter, which I know is relatively accurate. Take that with me and I'm going to compare I'm going to set the antenna up using this analyzer and um, then once I've got it to a decent SWR with the analyzer I'll put the meter in line and I'll see what the meter reads and as far as I'm concerned if they both read relatively the same then this is okay but if we get a big difference then I'm, I'm going to trust my meter because I know it's a good meter that works reasonably well considering so well, we'll find out how this goes, but as I said, so far, it's going well for £50. You can get these more expensively, but I wouldn't pay any more than 50 quid for it. If you're going to spend any more than £50 on, a, on an analyzer, you're going to want to go get yourself a proper real brand like MFJ or something like that and get a second hand one for about 150 quid. I mean, I sold my MFJ, I had a, pro I had a proper one with all the dial on it and it done everything. It done VHF, UHF and HF, it done the lot. Um, it was like 400 pound brand new, but I sold it for 180 quid um, last year because I just put it on an auction on eBay and that's what it went for 180 quid. So you can get some good ones if you're gonna spend any more than 50 pounds. But if you want a budget and you want an analyzer, the point of this is we'll see whether it's any good buying the cheap Chinese ones. So, bloody hell. But I'm telling you, don't buy the soldering iron that I unboxed. Full review video on the soldering iron coming up. If you want a soldering iron, get yourself a weller, proper weller. Anyway, catch you later, you lot. Thanks for watching.